Let's take a look at simplifying expressions with rational exponents. Rational exponents can be kind of scary when you first see them with those fractions sitting up there in the exponent. But if we just remember our properties for dealing with exponents, we can apply those with fractions as well. And off we go. We just dust off our fraction skills and life is good. So in this situation right here, this first one, we have n to the fourth and then that is being taken to the three halves power. Remember that when we have a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So we can think of this as four over one right there and then we're going to multiply those exponents. So four times three would be twelve. So we have n and then twelve on the top and then on the bottom we have 2 times 1 which is 2. Now remember when we're dealing with exponents that are fractions we can simplify them just like normal fractions. So 12 over 2 is going to give us just 6. So our answer for this one is n to the sixth. Let's take a look at this next one over here where we have 27 p to the sixth and that whole thing is being taken to the 5 thirds power. Now, one thing to be aware of here as we work with a problem like this, many times people say that we're distributing that 5 thirds, and we're really not distributing. Remember, the distributive property is where we take something that's being multiplied, and then we distribute it to each term that's in an expression in a polynomial. But here, we're just really applying that 5 thirds to each piece. So we have to apply the 5 thirds to the 27, so let's go ahead and start by doing that. So we have 27, and that's to the 5 thirds power, like so. And then we have p to the 6th to the 5 thirds. So times p to the 6th, and then that thing is to the 5 thirds power as well. Now, when we want to simplify this, if we have a fraction up in the exponent like that, Remember that the number on the bottom is the root, and then the number on the top is the exponent. Okay, And a way to remember that is roots are in the ground. Roots are in the ground, they're on the bottom right, right here. So we can simplify this to be the third root of 27, and then that whole thing to the fifth power, like so. Now when we do that then we can work on this piece first so we want the third root of 27 well that means what number to the third power gives us 27 well let's see I think that's 3 so this becomes 3 to the fifth oh well that's not so bad then over here if we work on this remember this is going to be 6 over 1 multiply straight across and we have p to the 30 over 3. And of course we can simplify that to be p to the 10th. And finally we have 3 to the 5th power right there and that'll be 243. So we have 243 p to the 10th. Okay. One thing to be aware of as you write these when we have uh, a root that's other than a square root then what we want to do is make sure we're really careful <clears throat> make sure that that 3 is small so that we don't mistake it for 3 times the square root of 27 because that would be something quite different alright then let's head over here for this one we have a negative showing up in our exponent and remember to deal with those negatives we end up we flip it down but if we have some other work to do with the exponent, let's do that first and see if maybe that negative gets a little bit nicer because it's kind of a pain to be flipping stuff up and down and so on. So let's start by, again, we have a power to a power, so we're going to multiply those exponents. So that's going to give us p to the, we've got 3 times negative 2 on top, so negative 6, and then 2 times 1 on the bottom, so that'll be 2. So that'll simplify to be p to the, well, 6 divided by 2, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Now we have to deal with that negative and the exponent. Remember, that's going to flip down to the bottom. And there it sits in the denominator, p 
to the third. Okay, so remember, if we have that negative exponent, we flip it down. The only thing that changes is that negative goes away in our exponent. It looks like that. All right, let's try this last one here and see what we can do with this. So for this one, we have 3 times b to the 1 half power times b to the 4 thirds power. Notice that this 3 is just being multiplied by the b. It doesn't have that 1 half and the exponent being applied to it. So it's just going to be a times 3 out front. Be very careful about that. Notice, and like we saw up here, here the 27 was in parentheses, so we knew that that 5 thirds needed to go with it. Here, that's not the case. So we just have that 3 sitting there, so something like that. And then we have the same base, and we're multiplying those two things together. So what do we do with the exponents? We're going to add those exponents. And to add fractions, oh, holy cow, we got to dust off those fraction skills. We need a common denominator, right? So our common denominator will be 6. So I'm going to make this 6 by multiplying by 3, top and bottom, just creatively multiplying by 1. And then over here, multiply by 2, top and bottom. So this gives us 3 times b to the 3 over 6, like so, times b to the 8 over 6, like so. Then we're going to add those exponents. So we have 3 times b to the 3 plus 8 is 11, and then over 6, like so. If you want to get rid of that dot for the uh, multiplication, we can do so. And we have 3b to the 11 over 6 for our exponent. Okay, so when we're simplifying expressions that involve rational exponents, remember those properties that we have for dealing with exponents. If we have a power to a power, we're going to multiply the exponents. If we're multiplying with the same base there, we can add the exponents. Or if we have a negative in the exponent, remember to get rid of that, we flip it down to the bottom. The one other that I didn't include an example of is if you're dividing. Remember, if we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. I hope this was helpful. Apply those properties just like you know how, and I know you're going to do great. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.